So in this episode, you will see me fail at achieving a composite armor look from a pile of scraps. And when I say failing, I mean the, the look itself was really good, I think. The problem was the kind of resin I used, and I used polyester resin. And the smell of it was so bad, even after curing, that I've had to dispose of it entirely, despite it looking cool, despite it being actually a really nice, interesting material. This did not go according to plan whatsoever! So I'm not saying polyester resin is completely useless, it certainly has its uses somewhere, but in my case, for something like this and the way I've used it, it was not really something I would want to wear. However, it did end up looking cool. And the reason I'm uploading this episode is because A, I believe that this sort of an effect can be achieved with another type of resin that doesn't smell so bad afterwards. And B, because um, I just want you to see what I did here because it still has some educational value here and some entertainment value as well. So enjoy watching this video, enjoy watching me fail. And also in the next video, we will be looking at something that I've achieved afterwards using some wood glue, which creates a rather interesting composite material effect. So, have fun! So, here is the form. As you can see, it's getting rigged out of an old uh, cabinet door or something similar. And we have some ugly gaps here and whatnot. I'm gonna duct tape in the corners so that the epoxy doesn't seep through. The only thing I really care about is that this is flat. It's just a board with some boards screwed to the sides. Calculated that one liter of resin, or of anything at this volume, one liter will give me 30 by 50 centimeters at about a centimeter depth. I did not calculate the fabric's impact on it, because I don't know, will it all go into fabric? Will the fabric's volume add to the volume? But I rather err on the side of thicker, so that I don't end up with just a bit of fabric with a bit of resin on it. I rather want a lot of resin with some fabric in it or something in the middle between those two. And we also have a lid here, which will fit in there to press from above to make it all flat. And I'm gonna have to address this hole here. So this is after addressing those problems. I've addressed all of them with duct tape, and I think this is good enough. There's not gonna be like insane pressure in there, nor do I want to have it perfect. I just want it not to seep through by itself as it sits and cures. Now, let's add some beeswax inside of that as a release. I don't know if it will work or not. This is beeswax, used for leather, usually, to refatten the leather, to preserve it well. And I'm just gonna smear it on all the surfaces that are gonna have contact with the epoxy, including the inside of the lid. And by the way, this smells great, because it's just natural beeswax. Ah, this is about to change as soon as we start popping the resin, because that's gonna smell horrible. And here is some of our finest Selection de Scrap. Some fabric with hearts on it. This is actually from my old lucky underpants, just a piece of them, <laughs> still keeping the rest. More underpants and stockings and pieces of parka and whatnot. This is really, really mixed. So, here is our crate. And it took surprisingly little of those scraps to fill it enough up to a point where I can say I don't want to fill it anymore. Otherwise, I don't know if there is any space for the resin. And you still see that I have a lot of those scraps left. So I might want to try this experiment with cheaper glue if this works and delivers a cool result at all. <laughs> which I don't know yet. So now we're gonna mix our polyester resin. It's just the cheapest kind of resin I could find in the local construction store. So uh, don't ask me about the brand or whatever. I have no experience with this. I have no idea if this will work. 
I have no idea if it reacts with some of the fabrics in there. I don't have no idea if it cures. Let's find out. Okay, so about an hour has passed. It, it still smells horrible, which is why I'm talking through my mask right now. But uh, let's remove all this stuff and see if we can release the mold and what's inside and whatnot. I'm really excited. Interesting, it said on the label that it gets warm, and guess what? It is kind of warm, but we have a nice surface here. This is really interesting. In some spots it's hard, in some spots it's less so. I think it's just not enough epoxy or resin overall. It feels all greasy from the beeswax, I believe. This did not go according to plan whatsoever. You can see it did not seep through to the bottom. But we have this particle surface here, so maybe we can do something with that still. I don't know. <laughs> so, definitely didn't go all the way through. On this side, it got a lot deeper. So here it's actually nice and deep. This part I like. Really stiff. This here is okay. But uh, yeah, I'll let it air out really outside on the table because this still smells so, so bad. So this is not what I expected. Mostly due to the insufficient amount of the resin, but this still looks kind of cool. I'll let it cure and dry and whatnot and air out for a bit longer until I touch it though. But it's a bit flexible, it's pretty cool. And I think it can make a nice chest piece. Now, let's take a look at it at about after a week looks pretty much the same but look how cool this looks in the sun really nice surface here i i really love how this turned out visually but i wish i used epoxy or some other sort of resin and not the polyester stuff because this still smells so bad even at a distance so I'm going to dispose of it, unfortunately. Like, no way I would be wearing something like this on my body. <laughs> and the internet said sometimes the smell disappears after a time, sometimes it doesn't. And there are some tricks like sealing it with clear spray paint and whatnot, but I don't want to waste like a can of clear spray paint on sealing something that might then crack and whatnot, you know. And then the smell is released again. Ah... Also, I can't like cut it or again it starts to stink, so just should have done a better research regarding the side effects of using polyester resin. And it seems to apply to polyester resin of any sort, as far as I understood the internet comments. Uh, and uh, also this particular sort of polyester resin I used was supposed to be re have, have a reduced amount of the stuff that makes it smell bad. So I'm going to dispose of this, but... 
Yeah, it's a pity. It's really a pity because look how cool this looks. I will, before I dispose of this, just for shits and giggles, and not suggesting that it's stab proof or anything, I am gonna still do a couple of tests here with my screwdriver. I tried it before with this folder knife, but it's really old and broken and it's kind of dangerous. So actually, I do not think I could get my knife through this. I'm not doing full force right now, but it's not even close. Ah, and it's almost folded on me. Dangerous to use an old folder knife for stuff like this. Don't do this at home. So, ah, I'm getting in a bit. But not really. At the parts where the resin is thicker, I'm having a really hard time getting in. It's like really tough. Here is less resin. Let's try that. Here is more again. So where it's less of it, I'm getting through. But not where is more of it. Let me take my screwdriver in the dominant hand. More force. Yeah, I can get through, but I think this step would have not went too far. So again, I'm not suggesting to wear something like this for actual protection, God forbid. But I was just curious. Yeah, and smacking it with a hammer will not damage it at all, I guess. Yeah. So that's it. Again, really pity. Nice material, but the smell is just... ugh. So that concludes this experiment. So I have tried this, some wood glue that I've had, at least this specific one, and I unfortunately don't have a lot of it. It seems to hold really well, it is also flexible, you can also see that it's flexible by manipulating this knob of it right here. So it's flexible, it holds those pieces really well together, and this feels like really really tough skin, like I'm not sure a zombie could bite through this or something. And let me show you, uh, a bit difficult with camera in one hand, signature socks and sandals, and I'll try to rip this top layer off, and it's really difficult, I don't think I can. I mean, I possibly could if I really grip it super well, but you see this bond is extremely strong. And this doesn't stink at all. So this is what we're gonna try doing next. First, of course, I need to get my hands on a big pack of wood glue. And you can see some stains of it here. And this is what it sounds like. Let's scratch this. So you see it has created some really interesting composite material here. 